There's uh, just one important thing about the assignment. Let's just pay attention here. So just a second, everyone. Please pay attention. This is third year. It's the end of third year. Okay, guys, this is important. My approach with the courses and all the instructors is that as you progress to fourth year, especially third year, you're responsible for your own learning. What that means is you do not go through assignments in, in class. We post the solutions, I post the solutions in my case, it's completely worked out for you on the website. If you choose to learn from this course, you must go to the website and go through the solutions and understand where you went wrong. Okay, so it's 100% your own responsibility for learning. Okay, so that's my approach for all my classes, especially for third year, second class, and all of four uh, very strong self directed learning components. Make sure you go to the website and figure out what to do wrong. Secondly, there's a handout here for tonight. Everyone got one? Okay, so this handout has four problems that we're going to work through tonight. You do not need to work with me at, the, at my pace. If you, if you find problem one and two easy, go ahead and do three and four. There's no need to wait for me. <laughs> We've got flows of A, flows of B, flows of C, 
We also have in this problem flows of inerts. We have a certain conversion leading at the exit. We've got a certain pressure, a certain temperature. There, a few other unknowns. We see, we're told that we've got 72% air. So the reaction here between SO2 and oxygen, which is a component then of air. So what's the mole fraction of, air, of oxygen? Why? Not a trick question. Why be mole? A pure oxygen stream coming into the air. So mole fraction of air B. Point seven two times what's the mole fraction of oxygen in air? Okay. Mole fraction of nitrogen, my inert, by I is zero. And 72 times 0.79, let's assume that the rest is 9, not enough for 4. So we've worked out the information now. Okay. So if we find our problem, and actually we've actually started to move a little bit into the explore stage. We were just looking around and seeing what, what's going on. What's moving in my system, what's moving out. Let's move then on to the plan step. The plan step is where we go and define a strategy for solving this problem. And on that sheet I handed out last night, I gave you six steps to follow. The first step is to write out the reaction. The second step was to pick your basis, which we chose as SO2. And then we rewrote that equation in terms of our basis. SO2 was A. Step three, we set up a stoichiometric table, which you have in front of you, and then we landed up with that final table over here. <coughs> what I summarized new for you is the list of unknowns that's on the, on, this, on the side. So I'm not going to uh, rewrite this table. That's why I printed it out and handed it out here for you. So the table that you've got handed out in tonight's class should match what you had at the end of the class last night. So just make sure that it is correct. Very easy to make a little mistake. Stuff <coughs> so let's go ahead then into step four. We've looked at what is known. We've got some initial mole fractions, some initial molar flows. We've got y a naught, y v naught. We've got y i naught. I've specified my temperature and pressure. So those are my initial conditions. Let me take a look now and start to tackle what's unknown. C a naught, epsilon, theta b, theta c, theta i. So take two, three minutes and write up your best guess or your best calculation for those five unknowns. And then we'll regroup and plan for our work. Work with the person next to you. And I'm going to then ask pairs of people to give me their answer for each one of those five. So work with someone around you and I'll ask both of you to give me your answer.
Alex, theta B, theta C, theta I, M squared. <coughs> something that you can remember in general that the concentration for any species um, that here I'm writing in terms of A is the mole fraction of it multiplied by the total pressure divided by R times T. So that equation holds everywhere and you can write it particularly at the entrance of the reactor so for CA0. So in this case CA0 is equal to YA0 times naught divided by R T naught. So I've got everything there. 0.28. The inlet pressure we were told was 1.5. One, one, R 8.314 and my temperature 500 Kelvin. So 
that I get me CA moles of 100 moles per meter cubed. Great, I've got all my knowns, I've got all my unknowns. The final step then is to actually solve what we're aiming for, which was to express the outlet concentrations of all species as a function of conversion x. So the only variable I have left in this entire system is my conversion capital X. So let's, uh, let's write up these based on the table that you have in front of you. We simply sub in here. So CA is 100 for CA naught, 1 minus X. <coughs> Epsilon is negative 0.14, so 1 minus 0.14x. CB similarly is a 0.54 minus 0.5x, 1 minus 0.14x. CC is 100x divided by 1 minus 0.14x. So this epsilon term appears in the denominator all the time for all the species. And then also remember to add in the concentration for the inerts. That's also a species that's leaving the reactor. And it's given to us in terms of 203 divided by 1 minus 0.14x. So what we've just done is we've defined our problem, we explored it, we planned our strategy, which was the this, this standard format that I handed out on the table in front of you. I'm only going to hand out this table once. Please follow this in the future for all these types of problems. The next step is do it. The do it step is obviously where we go and sub in our values, we, we finish up in solving. The temptation for everyone in this class generally is to start over here. Right? You read a problem and the first thing you do is you start to sub in values and you integrate and you differentiate and you use your equations without really planning and defining and exploring. And also, the checking and generalization part are two steps that I find most people omit. The checking part is especially critical. In many of my courses I see solutions where they say the velocity in the pipe is 3,000 meters per second without really thinking what that means. Right, so you get an answer at 3,000 meters per second. Just stop and think for a bit. Is that realistic? Okay. Clearly no for the chemical engineering systems we deal with. So it indicates that there's, you've used the wrong strategy or you've made a simple calculation error. One of those two options. So then just go back to, to one of your earlier steps and fix up, fix up the issue. The generalized step is also especially important. And even fewer people do this step. Let's take a look at what I mean by generalize. Generalize is, let's take a look at these equations here and think how this applies in a general system. One thing to look at, for example, is this term here for the inerts. 203, 1 minus 0.14x. What's going to happen as conversion increases? So conversion starts at zero, then it goes higher and higher as you progress through the reactor. The denominator approaches one. What's CA and CI going to, what's going to happen to CI? Increase. That's a little bit counterintuitive. Your inerts are inert. Why is the, why is the concentration of them changing? there's a change in volume in the system. So the total amount of inerts relative to the volume, that concentration of inerts goes up. Okay. Another generalized strategy is to take a look at a few special cases. At all these formulas, but let's just take a look, for example, at CA. What happens if you sum in x equals zero? You get 
fact your inlet condition. And that is what CA0 was back over there. Okay, so check, that's also part of the checking and generalizing step. These steps are really intertwined in some way. Check certain conditions. What happens when conversion is equal to one? Okay. And that happens when you pick your basis correct. Your basis is usually your limiting species. So if you get 100% conversion of your limiting species, you've got to achieve 100% conversion. Is this formula valid down here for conversion equals zero, for CC? Yep, works. Is it valid for CV? You get some conversion of CV. You get a certain concentration of CV. So check that you don't get negative concentrations. Okay, so we're going to see that coming up in some of the examples next. So we've solved the problem, we've answered what we've needed to, and we've done uh, some checking and generalizing at the end. Let's move to the second problem now, which asks to express the partial pressure of SO2 at the reactor exit in terms of concentration, uh, sorry, in terms of conversion X. This is an important problem because most often when we're dealing with gas phase systems, especially later on, for those of you that will take the 4K reactor design course, we start to move to expressing concentrations in terms of partial pressures instead. So gas phase systems, we prefer to work with partial pressure. Let's try and express SO2, and I should, that's an error again in the, note, in the question here. So it's, no, it is, we express the partial pressure of SO2 in other species A in terms of conversion. So go for that for a, for a minute or two, and then look, look, pick it up to you.
So lowercase p's are partial pressures, capital P's are total pressures. We have this relationship up here that the partial pressure of A is equal to CART, so concentration of A times R times T. Here we've got CA expressed already for us in terms of conversion only. So I've got that part solved. PA is CA, I know that, that term. R I know, and T I know, as the T at my reactor exit. Isothermal T is equal to T naught, so I do have all the information I need to solve that. Okay, so so this uh, write that up then. So we get a bit of cancellation occurring here. R cancels with R, T naught cancels with T based on the isothermal assumption. <coughs> Part of a good problem solving strategy is to look at alternative ways of, of doing the problem, or at least at the end, let's say, well, let's come and repeat the problem subbing in CA North America early on. Recognize also that YA North times capital P naught is equal to the partial pressure of A at the reactor entrance. And that's that's where why I wanted to do the expression of asking to express it in terms of PA naught, partial pressure at the inlet of the reactor. So this is giving me that link the inlet conditions in terms of the partial pressure of A. So I can now sum in that and get PA, lowercase PA, is equal to PA naught, 1 minus X, over 1 plus X1. So it's a little bit of a measurable. This guy? No. So partial pressure is equal to the mole fraction time inversion. Okay, so question three I'm going to skip over. 
because I'd like to look at question four. There's an interesting issue in question four. Question three is trivially simple. With the strategy we've learned in question one, you should be able to solve question three in a couple of minutes. And I've in fact given you the answer there, so you know where you, <coughs> you should land up. So question three is asking you to calculate the equilibrium conversion. And we're going to use a strategy identical to the strategy you used in assignment two that you just handed in yesterday to calculate the equilibrium conversion. So identical strategy there, you're just going to use the values from the flow table, solve for x equilibrium, and you're given the equilibrium constant. AC is equal to 10 moles per meter cubed. Just one thing to point out there on that question, I would like to emphasize, it's a system with A going to 2B, and it says that it's a reversible system, which is why we're looking at equilibrium. So A going to 2B implies the equilibrium constant KC is equal to the final concentration of B squared divided by the equilibrium concentration of A. Equilibrium constants, we've said, do not, are not in fact constant, they're a function of temperature. So the question states there that the equilibrium constant is given to you at 340 Kelvin. And we learned in a previous class how to find that equilibrium constant at another temperature if we know it at a base case temperature. One other thing to point out is that the equilibrium constant is not dimensionless. It has units which is probably counter to what you've seen in your prior chemistry courses. The equilibrium constant always has units. The only time it's dimensionless is if your numerator and denominator units happen to cancel out, but it's not guaranteed to always occur. So in this case, Kc has units of 10 <coughs> moles per meter cubed. Okay, so make, make sure you, you're understanding that. It's not, a, it's not a dimensionless constant. Question four then, let's take a look at that. This one says we're taking hydrogen and nitrogen in a flow reactor, isothermal and at constant pressure again. <coughs> we're trying to create ammonia. The feed is 50% nitrogen, 50% hydrogen. Show that the equilibrium, show, sorry, show that the concentration of leaving is such a value, 68.75, at 60% conversion. Let's take a minute to do the define and explore steps. What is known, what is unknown. And also, very importantly, draw a picture. So we've got those three steps up here, actually, for us on the board. So I'm going to keep the picture that I had from before, just erasing the previous data. So here's my sister. I've got nitrogen and hydrogen coming in. And I have ammonia, nitrogen, and hydrogen leaving. There's H2, N2. And over here I've got H2, N2, and ammonia. There's no inverts in this system. So Hydrogen and 50% of nitrogen. 
that is smaller percent. Which one's going to run out first? Okay. So this is going to be my basis. Do you want to explain why hydrogen is a basis? Because you, to produce ammonia, you're using three hydrogens, and you're also using one hydrogen. Okay, so you're going to run out of hydrogen first before you run out of nitrogen. I want you to go home and redo this problem, picking nitrogen as the basis, and see what happens. Very quickly, the problem will start to break down. <coughs> but the last thing you want to do in an intestinal exam is spend 10, 15 minutes and have the problem break down in front of you and have to cross it all out and redo it. So learn how to quickly identify how the, the problem breaks down. It's quite easy. You will see in your flow table, if you pick the wrong basis, in your flow table, what will occur is you start to get negative concentrations and so in your flow table, if you pick the wrong basis, you'll start to get negatives here in that bracket. Flow is always positive. You cannot have a negative flow. This term in front, FA0, is always going to be positive. The theta term must be positive. If you pick the wrong basis, this term over here is going to exceed that value. And you're going to get negative flows. And you're going to have to essentially rewrite all the problem again from scratch. So very, make sure you identify what is your basis. So in this case, nitrogen is not my basis. It's tempting to use it because it's already got the one in front of it. But let's change over to hydrogen as my basis. So it's H2 plus one third into goes reversibly to two thirds ammonia. Okay, so now let's come back to my process to find, explore, plan. We're going to follow the plan that we followed for all these problems before. Let's now continue on with plugging in with what I know and what I don't know. So I've determined that A is hydrogen plus one third B, which is nitrogen, goes to two thirds C. So that's going to be my, my strategy here. What do I know? I know some mole fractions, what are they? nitrogen, 50% hydrogen, so Y B naught is also 0.5. Y C naught is zero. So no, 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 no. Anything else that I know? The final temperature we know to be the same, 700 Kelvin, isothermal. Final pressure, 1,600 kPa. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and use our table now to calculate the, the answer here, which is we're looking for the concentration of ammonia leaving. So concentration of C. CC is my target. What's the next step in my strategy, in my plan? We set up our species, we set up our reaction. Let's get that table going. You know the conversion at the end. Fifty percent conversion. Okay. Now we're complete. Let's go. Let's go and do that table. Two minutes. Let's get it done. We get CC.
So the easiest ones in the table are always FA0, FB0, and FC0. Those don't take anything, okay? For my initial values. <coughs> What's the change? What's leaving the reactor? Straight from the tables. Again, the change column doesn't require too much thinking. What's the flow out, uh, change out for B? <coughs> Minus one third FA naught X. Change out for C? <coughs> FA naught X. The fourth column, again, brainless, is the sum of initial plus change. So FA naught 1 minus X. FB naught. As before, let's use this table to our advantage. We don't need to derive these. This is what all of last class was about. So we can write there that CA, let's write directly that CA naught 1 minus x over 1 plus x naught x. CB is CA naught again. Theta is B minus 1 third x 1 plus x naught x. CC is CA naught, theta C plus 2 thirds x, 1 plus x squared x. You're going to get pretty tired of writing these tables out over and over, but they're going to become very quick and easy to get right. Known? What's unknown? What don't we have here? What do we need to go calculate next? Theta B, theta C, epsilon, anything else? CA naught. Is that it? CA naught, epsilon, theta C, theta B. Yep. Okay, take a minute or two and get those four, four values down, and we should be able to finish in time. Okay? We'll follow the same procedure because we're not going to make a mistake. Which other procedures do you want? Remember what we have the we usually have that we certainly got substitute again, but the is symbolic means and obviously the aim of the alternative configurations we're going to get up the version of the six and five and all the configurations. So try to open and mark something. We're going to do that anyway. We're going to put the same We're going to do that anyway. We're going to do it anyway. Thank you. 
got no flow of C coming into the reactor. Theta B is the molar, molar ratios of YB0 over YA0, or 0.5 over 0.5. One person occurring, anyone else? 137? I don't know. Okay, so uh, CA0, let me add this here. CA0 is YA0 times P0 over RT0. Sum in your mole fractions, sum in your gas constants, sum in your pressures and temperatures, 137.5 moles per meter cube. The mole fraction, what is the concentration of ammonia leaving its second version? We're trying to find this guy over here. CA, we've got CA0, we've got 60% conversion, we've got epsilon, plug in, and we can show that you get 68.75. The question also asked, what is the exiting conversion of hydrogen? And I showed it's the same value. I messed it up. <coughs> concentration of ammonia is CC. The concentration of hydrogen is this guy up here. It's very interesting that you both CA and CC are the same concentrations. The three formulas are very different to each other. You work through that and try to figure it out. That's what the check and generalize steps are in this problem solving strategy. Two different formulas, same numeric value. Why is that? There's a relationship there, obviously, between the square metric coefficients. Also, notice that the concentration of nitrogen is double. The concentration of nitrogen is 137.5. That's double the 68 <coughs> That's CV. Why is the concentration of CV then double that of hydrogen and nitrogen? Again, related to stoichiometry, related to those equations. Work through those symbolically and see that that makes absolute sense. So tonight's class was about seeing three different problems and learning the problem solving strategy. That strategy is important to use. Do not forget to check and generalize steps. Those are two tempting steps to just omit and move on to the next question. Always do them in the test of the exam. And make your question three at home. It's very, very important.